Okay, Maddie, we are up to episode number three. Have you been enjoying the last three episodes? It's been great. Or a couple of episodes, I should say. It's been great so far. It's been good so far. <laughs> well, we're going to have something a little bit different. We've got someone in the studio today at headquarters, the mentors. So, the audience, who have we got? We've got Patrick Cosgrove from Double Bay, who's going to give us a pressing question. So, let's welcome Patrick Cosgrove. Patrick, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, how long you've been in real estate. Yeah, working out of uh, Raining Horn, Double Bay. Um, I've uh, been in real estate now for about six, seven years. So it's been quite a, a roller coaster of emotions, I'd say. <laughs> 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 I'm sure everybody's experienced that. But uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate Great. being here. Awesome. So, Paddy, um, tell us a little bit um, about your pressing question that you've come in here to join us here in the studio today. Yeah, I suppose um, one thing that I don't do, like I, I suppose I'm a, a typical hustler, hustler, typical grinder, you know, making a lot of calls, a lot of door knocks, that sort of stuff. So I suppose one thing that I really want to tackle in 2018 is a bit of personal marketing, agent yep. marketing, yep. Um, which I just, I've done literally zero of that personally mm. for the last couple of years. So, I mean, that's something I want to tackle. Um, but I suppose what's, what should I be doing? If I say put aside put aside a budget of about $25,000 for the year, next year, how would you divvy that up and what sort of platforms would you invest in in terms of like your traditional marketing, like uh, newspapers and stuff or letterbox drops to digital like websites, SEO or like social media? What, how, sure. what, would, what would you guys invest in? Absolutely. Do you want to answer that one, Maddie? Well, first thing, Paddy, is it's a crowded marketplace, right? So I think days gone by, owners are sick are getting – you know, a lot of flies in their letterbox. They're sick of seeing, you know, how great the agent is. I think anything you do today, you've got to have added value to it. It's got to add value. Yeah. So think when you're spending money, is it adding value to the community? Is it adding value to your past clients? Here's what I'd do. I'd take that 25 grand and I'd be very clever how I spend it. I'd be doing something. I'd take five of it and put it into a local community event, mm -hmm. like either a Double Bay Fair or double base school or I'd do something good with that for five grand. Some sort of sponsorship. Yeah, but something is going to add value to someone. Yep. Yeah, like, so something like, um, you know, Paddy, one thing I do know is like if you want the community to serve you, mm -hmm. you need to serve the community first. So think about where there is an affiliation. Like, I mean, I've got three kids, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got them all in schools. Yep. So if I was an agent today... I would be thinking about how can I align myself with that school where my kids go to? Why? Because I'm always at PNF meetings, I'm always at kids' concerts, they know who I am, what I do and what my offer is, yeah. but also how can I give back to that school? So I suppose, obviously, do you have kids? Uh, I've got one, Blake. That's, oh, that's your PA. It's his PA <laughs> sitting inside the studio today. But obviously you don't have children, right? But you would have to work out how do I, where can I align myself in the community? I'll give you a quick example of what Maddie's talking about um, in, in aligning your community. Um, I had a guy that um, really wanted to – he was in Willamaloo, right? Yep. Not far from your market area. And he really wanted to give back. I remember having this phone call with him on a, in the car and he said, Clatter, I need to give back to my community in Willamloo. He was earning over a million dollars in GCI. And I don't know if you know the underpass just before the William Street overpass where the train is. Mm. And there's this little park there and he saw these homeless people. And he said, I felt at a point there that here I am selling property in this area in Willamloo. Mm. And there are people sitting here who are homeless. And I'm sitting in a car that's a Porsche. And I'm in a Marnie suit that's worth $5,000. And he said, I, this does not feel right. And I said, well, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I want to sort of give back to these people. Mm. He did some research. When you start looking at becoming research, you start to become intentional about it. Mm. And what he did is he found um, Matthew Talbot there and he rang up the people. He said, I want to donate some money. Yeah. And they said, look, we've got some really good people donating money, but what we do need actually is volunteers to serve breakfast twice a month. And he said, I'm in. Amazing. So twice a month, he actually goes down to Matthew Talbot. That's awesome to give breakfast to the homeless from 6 o'clock till 9.30 in the morning, right? And that's his way of giving back to the community. But here's the thing. Don't ever think of community of like, where's, I'm spending $5,000, for example, and I didn't get a lead out of it. Wrong mentality. This is about you giving, right? Eventually, the word gets out. And I'll tell you how, how powerful this story was. 18 months later, he gets a phone call from, guess who? Lady Fairfax. Right? She rings up and she says, I've got an investment unit I want to sell in Darling Point. And he said, oh, how did you hear about me? 
And she says, well, I'm on the board with Matthew Talbot and I've heard you've been doing some great work and I, I was looking for a real estate agent. I was speaking to one of the ladies yeah, at Matthew amazing, Talbot. Amazing and story. And said, you know, um, you should speak to, I won't mention his name, but so-and-so, right? And still to this day, like five, six years later, he's still, you know, serving breakfast in the community. So Good story. He, but he was never looking for, oh, I want to get something back. Mm. When you give right out there, the word gets out, yeah. okay, at the end of the day. You so you've got to do the work. So think about with the $5,000 that Maddie's saying with part of your marketing budget, mm. where is it going to be best aligned with who you are? Yeah, where can you add value, Paddy, to the community? I used to work in Ramick, yeah. right, for 25 years selling. Prince of Wales – Great thing for me. I, and, and, and irrespective, I didn't. I had kids. I didn't have kids. Irrelevant. Yeah. There's kids in there suffering, right? If you can spend five grand on toys and just put, you know, Paddy Cosgrove on there, compliments of Paddy Cosgrove, Rainhorn, whatever. Drop in there and give them a whole five grand worth of gifts. That's don't return. Don't Forget yeah. the return. There's no return. Yeah. Who cares? But the value you're going to get feeling amazing when you hand a little teddy bear to somebody mm. at Christmas yeah. or a little toy that they would never get or whatever. Or there's, as Cloud said, there's a lot of kids that, not, not just the sick ones, what about the ones that are sitting in a house that won't get a Christmas present this year? You can find out from the communities where they are in your market. Look, you know, I know Double Bay is a very salubrious market, but at the end of the day, there's probably a lot of people there's the, the end of Double Bay market. There's probably a lot of people doing it tough in that market or around your core markets, right? Yeah. You just got to find where they are. Clouds knows, yeah. like he said, you know, you can go to the Salvos or there's plenty of well, people. There, there's plenty of people and I'll tell you what, I, I was doing a keynote speak uh, about three months ago for Westpac and just before I was being introduced on stage, the lady was talking about um, uh, the, the changes in, in lending, etc. And then she was saying about the two most suburbs that have got the highest – mortgage arrears in Australia, which is over 90 days. So they've got mortgage stress, wow. right? Guess what two suburbs they are? What do you think? Bondi? I would have thought, I would have thought like somewhere out west, right? Mm. No. Mossman and Vaucluse. Wow. wow. And Vaucluse is your, one of your key markets, right? That's interesting. So there's that many people in Vaucluse at the moment that are suffering mortgage stress. So you've got to be thinking, well, how do I plug in in some form of way, Salvation Army or whatever else, to maybe help some of those people? Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, kids in the family. So there's 5,000. Um, definitely social media. Um, everybody's following everybody these days. You yeah. only have to go. I've just flown to Hong Kong, been there for four days. I did a project. I'm a funny guy. I sort of look at everything. I really analyse stuff when I was away. So I said I flew with my wife at the airport. Every single person was on their phone. Yeah. Every <laughs> single person on the plane was on their phone. Yeah. Every single person at a bus stop was on their phone. And I started like sticky beaking as to what they're looking at. They're they, all on and they social media. Real estate agents, eh? No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're all at the airport, all in the waiting rooms, all all on their phones. Um, more phones and laptops, which I thought was interesting. And my wife said to me, "Have a look what they're looking at." And they're all on social media of some sort: LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. So it's obviously the new newspapers, it's the it new is. magazines, it's the news. So if you're on there, you're going to get picked up. Right? Yeah. So I would engage someone very professional um, to build your your social your media social profile. Yeah. yeah. And sorry, sorry, Clouds is going to say also too, but again, add value. So what you want to do is you want to say to your clients, look, part of using Pat Cosgrove is – I'm also – you're going to be exposed to my social media platform. Yep. So you're adding value with that, right? It's not just about yep. you. Your clients get the benefit of your social media. So what you do is you're going to say, look, every time I list a property, I'm going to launch it on my database yep. before I launch it on realestate.com, domain.com. Sort of like a VIP right. start. Correct. Yeah. So how do you – see, so adding value again, right? Yep. It's not – so you've done the charity, now adding value by social media. So you've got to get into the customer's shoes and think about what they want to see. Absolutely. Because yep. gone are the days – Yeah. My people are sick and death of um, hearing how great every agent is. You know, yeah. I did this, I did 10,000, you know, sales last year. I did, you know, four million. That doesn't yep. – people are not interested. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? Yep. So adding value in the community as Claudio said there could be even the schools in Double Bay which is a good yeah. thing the local fate um, you'll probably find there's not a lot of people in your market sponsoring that you no know? there's not I don't think well there you go you'd have you know Paddy Cosgrove um, is, is sponsoring the fate at the local school how better yeah. to, there's a thousand owners there probably to got houses but not only that you're giving five grand or something back into the school which is educating people in your market which is helping the kids 
get better things in their schools, whatever. Okay. So talking about social media there, um, Patty, uh, like you said, you don't want to be a dabbler. Okay, going into 2018, if you dabble, you're going to be punished. So this is about being intentional about having a plan with your marketing around social media. So when people dabble, dabble is like when someone puts a post once every two to three weeks, right? Yeah. That's dabbling. Like you have to have a clear plan, how many posts you want to put a week, what they're going to be focused on. Is it tips? Is it around the community? Is it around maybe a sale? Is it around maybe a schedule of open homes? But you've got to use social media to your advantage, but be intentional, not dabble in it, okay? Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two, I thought, hey, I'm, I'm going to throw us here, Maddie. Like, yeah. I'm going to throw something out here. Um, can we just pass the mic over to Clinton? Because Clinton's our behind the man scenes here. Yeah, right? Clinton uh, doing a cracking big part, job. He's a big part <laughs> of the mentors. Um, and a lot of this wouldn't Thanks, happen without, without Clinton. So, Clinton, just for the, some of the listeners out there, I mean, and, and obviously our, our audience is real estate agents, selling principles, etc. Sure. Anything that you would say, maybe three tips around that could do with their social media in 2018? Um. Okay, so first of all, Facebook, you need to start thinking about advertising, so actually boosting the content. Um, uh, leading off what Matt has said in terms of having a really good intention, trying to give value, and what Claudio is saying as well in terms of the consistency, you've now got a, a weapon where you can be very specific about who you target and who you get in front of. Yeah. Because we know so many people are on social media all the time. Um, I would definitely focus a lot of your attention on how you then advertise when you're on Facebook. Yep. So that's the first part of it. Um, the second part of it is um, utilising both Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And when you put out a piece of content, you want to also make sure that you're doing it right for the platform that you're working with. So with a yep. podcast, for example, at the moment, um, you know you need to go and host that on a platform. You need to make sure that you push that out to iTunes because iTunes gets 70% of uh, podcast downloads at the moment. Um, when you then go and put that piece of content out on YouTube or you put it on Instagram or you put it on Facebook, it's different for every single platform. So you want to make sure that you're giving on Instagram a short little clip or you're giving a graphic with a quote that's a pull out from that main piece of content that you've yep. done. So you can't use them in the same way. You have to have it specifically different. Yeah, yeah. you've got to be true to the platform. Right. You have to. Um, and then I'd say the last thing is um, have a lot of fun with it. You, you've got to be passionate about what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, if, if you want to engage with people, energy. energy is a massive thing. And I'm always talking to guys all the time when we're doing like video footage or whatever it is that we're working on. If you're not being as authentic and energetic as you can, why would somebody buy from you? Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. I think you have to have a bit of fun, don't you? Yeah. A- absolutely. And, and the other thing too, Clinton, you just um, – you mentioned it to at uh, end of year event the other day. I love the bit where you sort of said, as a point of difference, and we were talking just with on episode two a little bit about degrees of separation. But Clinton, just explain to some of the listeners about what you said. Um, like, if you were to do some social media, like sitting down with the the owner that's been living there for fifty years, and tell us that story, like storytelling. I think that's huge. Yeah, yeah, I love this one. So, like, I know domain.com.au, and we were talking about this before. Um, they've uh, they've got over a hundred. Um, uh, journalists that actually go out and they do storytelling and news presenting, right? Um, social media or just – if you look at human psychology in general, we're so yeah. much more interested in storytelling. Yeah. Like it's been around for thousands of years, right? So rather than just go, hey, here's the property, here's the features and benefits, what's the story of the actual vendor that sits behind it? Mm. So that's the first part of it. Yeah. And like, you know, what what are their experiences in the area? What, what do they love about the, the area and all that kind of stuff? So we actually did a video where we had um, like a mini documentary and it was the story of uh, the owner who'd been in botany for 30 years and um, we put that up against just a regular listed um, property video and lo and behold the mini documentary way outperformed a regular listing video yeah i love documentaries hey? yeah, but it's just and even clint too the other thing uh, what you said before is very strategic advice to pat about um how to use facebook and instagram linking them um also too what about the other thing imagine if you could get the vendor to actually say why they bought the property mm. In yeah, addition, that's a big one. Isn't that a good one? Yeah. So in addition to 30 years living in Botany, imagine getting to say, look, why did you actually buy this property and what have you liked about living here? Mm. You don't need to run an ad then. I mean, that's <laughs> free advertising. Yeah. We might have to split the commission. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 we draw the property from Mark and go, well, we love it here now, we're going to stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, things like what's your favourite room? Where have you spent most of your time? Were the kids born in this room? They grew up here. What Did you use the yard? What, what are your neighbours like? What they go to? Yeah. Yeah, what are the neighbours like? What's it like for transport? Imagine yeah. if they just did the advert because you can do this now on social media, yeah. right? 
Yeah, imagine, you, imagine that, Patrick. That's just straight away like a real point of difference. Mm. So have people tell the story. The people that live there, that, that experience it, you know. Like if someone asked that question of me when we bought our house and I live on the northern beaches, why, people go, why did you leave the east to the northern beaches? And we just sort of said we love the beaches, we love the, the, the lifestyle up here, but also why well, we bought that house because it was like a 900 square metre block. Um, it had the potential to do something special around it. It's got views towards Bilgola Beach. I love the water. And imagine if I started to tell that story in a video to someone selling it, people would go, I can resonate with that. I can connect with that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So no one can sell the property better than someone living in that property for 5, 10, 15, 20 or 30 odd years, right? Yeah. So imagine if you did started doing that in your social media and you invested in it, you would have a major point of difference against all the other people yeah. in the area. And Clint, Clint spe- specialising in this space, so you've got someone here to talk to about it you yeah. can use. The other thing is too is I'd be talking to these guys about um, – so you spent five thousand giving back to community. Yep. That ten ten k budget on your videos, your social media. Yep. Talk to Clinton potentially about that. The other thing, so that's fifteen. You've got ten left. I'd be putting five thousand of that ten back into your past clients. Past clients. Gifts, yeah. VIP night, movie night. Yep. Car wash vouchers, anything you can give back to them without them asking yep. and not expecting it. That's worth millions of dollars in commission for the next five years. Yeah. You do that every year. Every year, spend five grand, get a VIP night for two hours, drinks and pickies for your top 30 clients, yep. give them a gift, meet them six months for a movie night, put a mo- any new release if they've got kids and there's a kids movie. You know, you see some of these Planet of the Apes or whatever coming out, you go to the movie theatre, say I want to book the movie out for 30 people. Yep. You have a VIP night, little cheese plates that for them, they get a screening with their kids and it's it comes up. Um, yeah, Clinton to do something for you, you know, Paddy Cosgrove, agent on the movie theatre. Yeah. Thanks for coming. You do a little address the night for and say, guys, enjoy the movie. Yeah. And you leave, whatever, so you're like, there's another five grand. Um, so all of us, you notice I haven't thrown anything in a letterbox yet. No. Right? And that's the theory because everyone's using spray and pray, right? Yeah. A lot of the agents say spray everything out there and pray someone's going to call. Yeah. And that's the worst thing you can do in today's market because – in your area especially, it's probably 50% of the nannies and housekeepers are clearing the mailbox out yeah. before the owner gets home, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you've got a problem for you're not even getting into the house. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the next thing I'd do with the last five grand, so you've got social media, um, Facebook, all that setting up here. You've got – I would have – and this could be, again, for you, Clinton, I would have somebody coming to your auctions mm-hmm. every time the hammer goes. Do you do on-site or in-rooms? Or We do in-rooms. Okay, so if, if an in-room auction, I'd get them to come on behalf of you, turn up after the auction when the hammer goes down, interview the client straight away. Straight away. Straight away. Yeah. Right? I'd also get um, some, some video around the journey. So yep. listed the property, interview the owner as to why they listed the property, why they chose you. Yep. What's experience been like at some vendor meetings, etc. Then after the sale, so I'd do the process. That's why I'd spend all my money. Well, it's it's, it's it, you made a really great point there, Maddie. Like, um, you know, these client appreciation parties, like investing in that is so heavily. I mean, you know, we had our end of year event for my clients. That's the way I give back to you guys. Mm. We're basically. Um, you know, we, we do a bit of a training session for two and a half hours and then yep. and then there's drinks and food that come out and you can network with other people, etc. Like, I've been doing that for three years now, Maddie. right? Yep. And all my clients are going, are you having that Christmas party yeah, at the end go. of the year? And, and they love coming just so they can mingle with other people, yep. have a drink, etc. So you create something special. And I remember a client, this is going back three, four years ago, he used to hold it at the Manly Pacific Hotel. He'd dump in 20000 a year, but he sent he sold high-end property in Bow Street, man. Yep. It's probably the best street, right? And he would have like only the top 80 guests turn up to the Manly Pacific Hotel. The people, the, 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 you know, they'd be serving wine, beer, champagne would be flowing. But he'd have a gift for all the ladies and it would be in a blue, wrapped in white, Tiffany's bag, right? And you know women, closest way to get to a heart with a girl. Yeah. And as you know, women make most of the decisions, right, Patty? They make most of the decisions. So what they were doing is getting at the end of the evening this Tiffany's bag and they would love people would ring him up to try and get onto his Christmas party. But it was only limited to 80, right? But you know what? He's got number one market share in Bow Street, even till to this day, okay? And he's probably got number one market share in Manly. Why? 
because he's investing in those people and making it memorable. Yeah. Okay. And I bet she doesn't do letterbox drops or throw no. stuff in the mail. No, so not that, at all. That not cheapens at all. your brand. So, Paddy, the other thing I was going to say to you is obviously, you know, you obviously know Claudia and you're investing in coaching. That's outside of you. So, yep. why I'm saying to you to do the social media stuff is important is because we learn a lot from the young people, right? Mm. I've got kids, right? But they're 17 to 19. Yep. They have never read a newspaper. Yeah. Right, so they've been born twenty, nearly twenty years ago. Never looked at a newspaper. My son's never read a newspaper yet. He knows everything that's happening about every news thing because got the thing flicking up the news on his phone all the time. Right, yeah. he's telling me, "Did you hear this? Did you hear that? It's going to be forty degrees tomorrow, Dad. Did you hear this?" And the other thing is, he uses so he makes all his decisions based on what he sees on YouTube and reviews. So. He won't do anything without... He's telling me, Dad, why are you buying that phone? Did you see the reviews mm. on YouTube? I say to him, son, they're paying these guys to tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. And he goes, no, they're not, Dad, because this guy's independent. He's actually done his reviews on the reviewer, yeah. right? Now, what I'm suggesting to you, that generation coming through is picking up everything and their decisions are being made by third parties, mm. endorsement. Right, so you getting your clients to endorse you is better than you endorsing yourself. Yeah. So some clown on YouTube saying, you know, buy this iPhone over the Samsung or whatever, my son was looking at the other night, <laughs> is influencing my son's decision to go and buy a phone. Yeah. So it's not um, Apple telling him to buy our Apple phone. Yeah. It's not Samsung telling him go and buy. It's that he's using social proof. And the guys, I saw the guy on the TV and he's doing, sorry, on the YouTube and he's showing why you should, what this does over the other one. It's amazing, isn't it? So it's it amazing, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, those people, my 20-year-old yeah. son, he's going to be our purchasers in the next 20 years. Yeah. If we don't understand how they, they don't read newspapers, they pick up everything on social. They're on this 24-7. Yeah. I mean, I have to get it out of his hands when he goes out a shower. <laughs> but you know, that's the only time he puts it down. Now they're making waterproof ones, yeah. probably for that reason, so you can wash your hair and look at YouTube. Whatever. But um, you're gonna steal uh, the phone and get out of there. So I've got a question for you, mate. So what is he going with Samsung? What's he going with iPhone? Do you um, know? Well, he's got. A, he just bought the new. I, I just bought the new iPhone for him. Um, Did you? But he's now telling me it's not as good as it, he thinks it was. And then you go buy a Samsung. I love it. He changes them like he changes underpants. Unfortunately, he's getting, he's getting mixed reviews. Hey? <laughs> he changes them before he changes them. But he believes, like he follows this reviewer guy and I know the guys can't think of his name but if that guy told him to run through that glass window he'd he start re preparing to run through because that he, he's and built up that trust yeah trust so the guys in America somewhere I've got no idea who he's never met the bloke but he's third party endorsing so your clients after the auction are going you cannot use anybody else except Paddy Cosgrove look how he looked at us Look how Blake looked after us. Look how the team looked after us. Why would you use anyone else? Yeah. That's much better than you saying, hey, I'm great. Yep. Right? And it's much better than you even sponsoring a fate or doing anything. You've had a user of your product endorsing you. Yeah. How better does that get? Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just reliving now exactly what you're saying, Matt, because I've got a 13-year-old son. He plays PS4 yeah. as much as like seven days a week and he's the same type of thing, right? He goes on a guy on YouTube and he follows him. And I said, um, and, he, and he's quite a bright kid, right? I said, what do you want to do at school? He goes, I want to become a gamer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, Patty, my daughter's 17 and she's amazing, like, with all makeup and all that sort of stuff. And I said to her, how, look, how did you know how did she show me? How, look, Dad, do you like this? Do you like that? I gave you, she said, I just learned it on YouTube. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So she learned how to put lipstick on and do whatever they do, eyeshadow and stuff. And... She's learnt it off – there's people on YouTube showing you how to apply it, how to do it, mix colours, etc. So they don't need to even leave the house to find out how to do something. So they're going to be selecting an agent one day, right? Yeah. Well, how do you think they're going to select them? All from reviews. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's so we, we've got to get ahead of that curve now, yeah. you know? LinkedIn. It's LinkedIn's, a review world now, isn't it? LinkedIn's extremely powerful It's because it's the business Facebook effectively. It is, yeah. yeah. So, Paddy, I would probably say to you as you review your 2018 marketing plan, think about how much is technology involved in your plan. Mm. 
That's what you got to look at because if, uh, like Matt said, if it's all letterbox drops and a lot of agents out there, you know what? You got to get ahead of the curve. You got to get stuff that's going to move the needle in 2018. Have some degrees of separation, absolutely. But the whole thing is, as you're on social media all the time and consistently, what it does is it builds a level of rapport with people. Mm-hmm. So don't look at the likes. Don't look at you know, um, you know. It's about the views and who's seen it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I walk into. You know, people's offices. I had a guy the other day. This is so funny, man. I was, I was at an office the other day and this guy comes up to me. He was like 19. He shook my hand, right? And I went, he goes, my name's Shane. I went, oh, g'day, Shane. I thought I knew him. I was like, where do I know this guy? I don't know him. And he said, mate, I've seen your videos on YouTube. I love your content. You're kidding. Right? There you go. So he's a 19-year-old kid, right? Like he's young. He's just got into real estate. He says, I've watched your videos. So you know. autograph? Well, I felt like I wanted to give him an autograph, let me tell you. But the whole thing is, my point is that – the more you're out there, yeah. the more people are going to know about you. So it's like I heard, I think, Rick Sarrao, your, 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 your principal say, you know, social media is like the letterbox on roids. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, it really is. That's good. Okay, any questions? Any? Have we answered your question today, Paddy? I think we've covered it extremely well. <laughs> so, Paddy, the other thing I'd do is I'd make, the, bu- I'd make, well. the, I'd make the budget 35 and pair off 10 for Claudia <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Doesn't work. Can I invoice you guys? <laughs> <laughs> but one thing to finish off with, um, uh, Patty, just so you know, and for the listeners out there, just try when you when you got your goal of your business plan for your GCI. A rule of thumb is normally around six percent is what you should be investing back into marketing of your own business. Understand that you're in a business within a business, and you need to be investing back in you know building your brand, your profile, giving back to the community, etc. So I hope you've enjoyed episode three here with the mentors including our other mentor here today, Clinton. Thanks yes. for joining us, buddy. Well done, Clinton. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. This oh, is good. Oh, man. He's good the stuff. guru of social media. The no. Yoda. Oh. Not at all. Not at all. I just... No. <laughs> so uh, he's from Sprinkler Media or Sprinkler.media, right? Sprinkler.media, Sprinkler yeah. Media, whichever way so you want. If you need to reach out to him, you want some really cool ideas and strategies That's about right, 2018 yeah. around your social media platforms, reach out to him and you'll find him everywhere through the social media channels. Okay. Yeah. So that wraps up episode three and... Uh, We've got to say thank you to Esteban who's yeah. been filming our well first done, three Esteban. episodes. That's it. So when you see a couple of the shorts, that's yeah. him involved. All right, guys, thank you so much and we'll see you well in episode done. four. Well done, Clouds. Thanks, Matty. Yeah. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.